Frankie Finance is back, and I guess finance isn't really the best word because all I really do is explain to you guys that the 1% elite want to steal your money. And people really need to get in their heads that that's their primary goal. Control the money, control the resources, and they control the people. A few months back, I was the only person to call the crypto crash, coincidentally, one week before it happened. Literally one week before Bitcoin tanked from 60,000 to 35,000, and not only Bitcoin, all of those other cryptocurrencies also took a dump. Did that crash steer so many people away from crypto that they need a new gimmick? Or is it the constant mention of cyber attacks and power grid shutdowns? Now to the latest trend that's sweeping the internet. So called NFT. They're now selling for huge bucks. $69 million. Oh dollars. So what's behind this latest craze? That is the question to ask. Okay, so there's some super strange stuff happening online right now, and I need to tell you about it. First, look at this tweet. The first tweet ever tweeted in the history of Twitter. The tweet was by Jack Dorsey. I'm one of the co-founders of Twitter. And this tweet was somehow just purchased for $2,915,835.47. You serious? And it's not just a tweet. Just last month, a single JPEG sold for $69 million. Oh my God. The NBA is selling little moments of basketball games for hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is all sorts of digital things that people are purchasing a version of them for lots of money. All of these digital currencies, crypto, every single coin, NFTs, have completely fabricated, made up stories behind them. BS, no accountability. And keep in mind, the 1% elite aren't just you know a few hundred billionaires. They have millions and millions and millions of pawns, peons, working together to deceive you, especially on social media. Any cryptocurrency video on YouTube will have these fake comments on it. Bots shilling for crypto, trying to convince you to invest, and then as soon as enough average dummies put their money into that investment, they cash out and tank it. And, and one overlooming thing is, is that even a word, overlooming? Uh, the New World Order government coin. What's going to happen? Are these cryptocurrencies going to be void and crash when the government announces their legitimate coin? Is the government going to adapt Bitcoin or one of the main cryptocurrencies? As We don't know, but all of these conspiracy theories come true, so that's going to happen. What is an NFT? This stands for a non-fungible token, but what exactly does that mean? Fungible means the ability of a good or an asset to be interchangeable with another individual good or asset of the same type. So an asset that is fungible is the best kind of asset to use in commerce. The prime example of a fungible asset is cash. If someone gave you a $100 bill and you gave them back five 20s, no one loses, no one gains anything because cash is fungible. The same thing would be true if you gave me an ounce of gold and I gave you back a different ounce of gold. They're both worth the same. They are interchangeable for one another. Now, a non-fungible asset is one that cannot be substituted identically for another asset. So if me and you were to trade cars, even if the car was the same model and year, it would not be fungible because one of us could have a manufacturer defect or maybe yours rides a little bit better, but the gas in your car, that would be fungible because it's interchangeable. Other more traditional non-fungible assets include real estate, artwork, and now encrypted digital tokens, AKA NFTs. Now the word token in the case of non-fungible tokens refers to a digital certificate stored on a blockchain in the exact same way that your favorite cryptocurrency is stored on a public ledger. So an NFT is a digital asset that can't be substituted for any other digital asset and it's publicly verifiable. Now you might be thinking, why would I pay $100 or $1 million for something that I could literally just screenshot and have for free in my phone? And th that's a great question. I'm not saying you can't make money trading crypto or stocks, but for someone to make money on these currency exchanges, someone else has to lose money. So many average people, normie, sheeple, whatever you want to call them, lost so much money on that previous crash 
that the elite secret society degenerates can no longer steal money as easily using that tactic. They created the game, they make the rules, and you can't beat them. But if you don't play their game, they can't win. I think there's an analogy for this. Like, like if you're getting bullied in, in a sandbox, go build your own sandbox. Again, you can make money trading, but the odds are against you. It's not something for the average person. You will never have the insider trading tip of when the big dump is because you're playing in a rig system. The average person trying to trade is like a kid going to his first little league game and you know Justin Verlander is on the mound against him. These pricks in control of social media have done an excellent job at gaslighting people into losing their life savings or at least portions of their life savings. And this is really one of the biggest lies there is. If they are unable to convince you to invest in systems they own, they can't steal your money and continue to be parasites. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, some of you might be wondering, well, Frank, what do you do with your money? I am a quote, businessman, unquote, as in, uh, I guess not a traditional businessman that invests in businesses and flips them and that stuff. I have my own creative ideas that I am fortunate enough to be able to turn money into more money in an unconventional way, which is a unique opportunity, but uh, I'm losing my mind doing it and I don't know how much longer I'll last. Uh, so hopefully this helped you guys out. You can go to franktestafano.com to support me through all of my businesses. Uh, if you can leave a comment down below, if you have any insight, any questions, like the video, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you for tomorrow.